Chairs No Waiting, episode number 437. The E Bullet, July 2017. Two Chairs No Waiting is brought to you by the folks over at WeaversDepartmentStore.com. Drop by over at Weavers and check out some of the new stuff they've got. One of them is the Kerosene Cucumber shirt. It's a t-shirt. The name fees Kerosene Cucumbers right there on the front. Folks are seeming to love this one, so you want to go and get your one over at WeaversDepartmentStore.com. Two Chairs No Waiting is also brought to you by donations from listeners like you. I want to thank all of you for your support of Two Chairs. Hello, everybody. I'm Alan Newsom, your host for Two Chairs No Waiting, and it's so great to have you right here in Mayberry with me. This episode of Two Chairs No Waiting, we're going to go over the July issue of the e-bullet. Now, you may or may not have gotten that issue. I know a lot of folks, uh, we had some trouble emailing it out because there's always problems. So one of the reasons I do these podcasts is to make sure people are aware. The e-bullet is available. You get it by email or you can go over to imayberry.com. If you go there, there's a link right there on the front page that takes you to the e-bullet. The e-bullet. Yay. Jim Clark spends a lot of time putting this thing together, and folks, it is awesome. Now, some of the stuff has already occurred because it came out in July, but uh, today, as I record it, is the 31st of July. So it's still July. It's close. It's close. Oh, it's close. Sound like Burt Miller talking. Uh, so we're going to go over some of the things that were found in the e-bullet. And I definitely want to encourage you. It's not going to be everything. So I want you to encourage you to head over and check it out for yourself at imayberry.com. So let's get to work. Let's get some background music for you so you don't just have to hear me talk. And let's go over and check out the e-bullet. So we're going to go into first a little bit of Floyd's Barbershop Bulletin Board and Event Calendar. Now, as I said, some of the events have already occurred, so we're going to slide by some of those. But I want to tell you, the Andy Griffith Museum, as I talked about in the meetup, is brand new and opened again. So go over to the Andy Griffith Museum and check it out. There's some amazing stuff over there uh, that I know you're going to want to see. The way they've designed the, show, the, the place, it uh, features all kinds of collections from Emmett Forrest. And you can go to andygriffithmuseum.org get more information definitely go jim clark says it's a bedazzling museum makeover the andy griffith museum has just completed a major remodel that now provides a truly beautiful state-of-the-art home for its impressive collection of andy griffith artifacts the museum reopened on june the 29th in a scenario that only count is Vandalecki could make happen the first visitors after the reopening was Andy Mayberry and his family from Arkansas. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, the fellow's name was actually Andy Mayberry. Now, folks, if you haven't seen it, they have got uh, this. You need to go and check out the e-bullet itself and see the pictures there. Or you can go to the Andy Griffith Museum, andygriffithmuseum.org, and check it out. Now, there's been things that have already occurred that were on the actual calendar. So I'm going to skip through those, stuff like Betty Lynn being there, the big Mayberry meetup that you got to hear about last week here on the podcast. If you hadn't heard about it, go and check it out. Both of those things have already occurred. So let's head on over to August. Mayberry Night in Troy, North Carolina, featuring Maggie Peterson. It's coming up this Saturday as I record it. It's August the 5th over in Troy, North Carolina. It's a fundraiser that helps out the local deer, deer program. Uh, guess what? There's a secret. Dixie Griffith, Andy Griffith's daughter, she's also going to be there as a special guest. It ought to be great time. It's at the James Garner Center at 7 p.m. Reserve seating is $20, but you better hurry. Journal, journal admission tickets are $15, and there will probably be tickets at the door, but go ahead and give them a call. You can call uh, You can call the number is in the evil. Go check it out. I won't give it to you because it's, it's a phone number. <laughs> I don't want to give that to you. Folks, uh, coming up uh, later this month, Betty Lynn's going to be greeting folks on the 18th at the Andy Griffin Museum. So you can go check out the museum and get to see Betty. Definitely worth a try, worth a chance to go there. August the 19th, Maggie Peterson and Rodney Dillard and the current Dillard Band will be joined by David Mayberry Deputy Browning for two performances of their Mayberry Moments show. 
at the Cummings Playhouse in Cummings, Georgia. Cummings, Georgia. Yeah, got to go to that. Showtimes are at 3 p.m. and 8 p.m. And uh, for information, go to the e-bullet and look at August 19th in the calendar, and you'll be able to get more information. Uh, September 15th, Betty will be back at the museum. So if you can't go August 18th, maybe you can go September 15th. And guess what? Right after that, Mayberry Days. That's right. Mayberry Days is September the 20th through the 24th. You do not want to miss that. If you have any opportunity to go, please try to make chance, uh, make time to go see or go to Mayberry Days. Stars confirmed this year are Betty Lynn, of course. She lives there. That's Thelma Lou. Rodney Dillard, he was uh, the guitar playing darling boy. And uh, Ronnie Shell, he'll be there. He was on two episodes of the Andy Griffith Show, as well as he was Duke Slater on Gomer Pyle USMC. Margaret Carey, she was Bess Muggins and Helen Scobie. She's going to be there with us. Bettina Link is supposed to be there. She is the wife of the late producer Richard O. Link, that you see his name at the end of every episode. Karen Knotts will also be there. Uh, also booked for the, the weekend are the VW Boys, Michael Hoover, and his Memories of Elvis show. Uh, the Tams, uh, Ma- James Gregory is going to be there. Neil Brower will be putting on his popular Professor Brower's lecture that we see so many times here on the podcast. Folks, head over to MayberryDays.org for information. Make time and make plans to go there. you got to do it someday. Do it soon. All right, September 23rd. So if you can't go there, maybe you can head over to the Missouri and hear Missouri Boat Ride. That's Dean Webb, one of the mandolin playing Darling Boy. He'll be performing there at the Carl Junkin Bluegrass Festival at Carl Junkin, Missouri. It's Carl Junction, if I say English correctly. It's just a few miles northwest of Joplin, Missouri, so you can head over there as well. On October the 7th, This is a new event, a new show that we'll be doing. It's about a half a dozen or so of Mayberry's tribute artists will present a tribute to Mayberry at the Averett Center for the Arts in Statesboro, Georgia. Showtime is 7 p.m. and tickets are $24. And there's a link in the e-bullet to see where you can go and actually get those. So definitely go check it out. Karen Knotts is going to be performing her Tied Up in Knotts performances. She's doing one uh, October the 19th. And that's in Oro Valley, Arizona at the Gaslight Music Hall. That'll be fun to see. Uh, Betty is going to be again on October the 20th. Going to be at the Andy Griffith Museum. And Karen is also going to be doing her a keynote speech. Karen Knotts. On October 22nd, uh, titled Don Knotts Rides Again at the Wild Bunch Film Festival in Wilcox, Arkansas. Yeah, that ought to be cool. Now, in October the 24th through the 29th, it may be too late to get to go with us, but Margaret Carey is going with us on the cruise to Mayberry number 12. Oh, man, that's going to be a lot of fun. All right, so let's move on to cast and crew news. Ron Howard has been brought in mid-filming to save the new Han Solo Star Wars film. That's right. Uh, we've gotten off gotten off course a little bit. Uh, you, know, we, you know, the directing team wasn't working out too good, so they got rid of him. So they brought in Ron to, to take over. There's a general consensus that Han will be in very good Hans. <laughs> See what I did there? Han, okay, he'll be in good hands. Be good, Han, good hands with Ron. Uh, the film is slated for release Memorial Day weekend, 2018. Ron is also set to direct a documentary about the life of the late legend uh, of opera, Luciani Pavarotti. Ooh, I think I got that right. Imagine Entertainment and other partners from the Grammy Award winning The Beatles, Eight Days a Week, the Touring Years documentary, uh, return to produce that one as well. It's awesome. Uh, just recently, it was announced that Ron is an Emmy finalist for the best documentary or nonfiction special for his Beatles documentary. Other directing jobs currently in Ron's queue include adaptations of the novels 
70s and the girl before. In late June, Ron announced that Pablo Picasso will be the subject of the second season of Genius, which Ron is executive producing for Na National Geographic, Nat's Geo Channel. The first season, which was about the life of Albert Einstein, earned solid ratings and nice reviews worldwide. Ron is also nominated for an Emmy in the limited series category for his direction of the premiere episode of the series. Ah, here's one and I know you're going to be interested in, so rush out and get this before it's gone. The current asking price for Ron's apartment in El Dorado building in Manhattan's Upper West Side is three bedrooms, two baths, with a private el with a private elevator. The asking price currently is only 11.5 million. That's right. It's reduced from the original 12.5 million. Now is your chance <laughs> to go get that. That's in dollars, by the way. It's those new kind of dollars that Mr. Clampett on the Clampets got paid, and they're called million dollars. Yeah, millions. I'm not sure what those are exactly, but it's a new kind of dollar, evidently called millions. So uh, it's 1.5 million dollars. So just in case you need the 11.5, I'm sorry, not 1.5, 11.5. So, all right, none of that's in the e-bullet. That's all commentary by Alan. The, the uh, okay, all the, all that extra stuff is all just me. Here we go. Let's get back to it. Clint Howard has several films. Now, Clint Howard is Leon on the Andy Griffith Show. He has several films that are either wrapping up or. Uh, editing or about to start production and it wouldn't surprise followers of the Nashville based Still the King TV series to see Clint return as Crazy Dave at some point. Rance Howard, the father of Ron and Clint likewise has sev several film projects about to get underway and we're late in reporting that Rance's wife Judy passed away January in January of Alzheimer's. Judy was a noted journalist, playwright, and novelist. She and Rance were married in 2001 after both her first husband and Rance's wife, Jean, the mother of Ron and Clint, passed away the previous year. Survivors beside Rance and the other Howard family members include two daughters from Judy's first marriage and four grandchildren. Uh, the sympathies of Mayberry family or with their family. Although officially retired, Jim Neighbors still does occasionally perform in Hawaii, where he lives. He has performed a few songs during at least one event so far this year, but mostly is just enjoying the quiet life at home in his tropical paradise. Betty Lynn was the subject of the cover story of the June issue, the very first issue, the inaugural issue of the Mayberry Magazine. And that is a entertainment and tourism publication for Mount Airy, North Carolina, where Betty lives. Uh, Betty's next day to greet fans at the Andy Griffith Museum is coming up in August. So check out the event calendar for that information. Let's see, she's also going to be participating in a sold-out lecture with Neil Brower for a specialty tour group at the Andy Griffith Museum. That was late in July, so I'm not sure. She may have already done that. Wow, I'd like to have been there. Maggie Peterson, Charlene herself, joined her TV brother, Rodney Dillard, and his band, plus the Mayberry Deputy uh, David Browning, in early May for their Mayberry Moment show in Duluth, Georgia. It was a great success, too. I talked to them after it. They really enjoyed it. They had a great time. And after a weekend off, Maggie was right back on the road, and this time with Ronnie Shell for Mayberry in the Midwest Festival in Danville, Indiana, where they were joined by Dixie Griffith, Andy's daughter, and several Mayberry tribute artists. Dean Webb, he's the mandolin playing darling boy from the original Derlers. He celebrated his 80th birthday in March. He's recently been a little bit under the weather, but he's on the mend uh, at home. Uh, though he likely won't be climbing down any ropes out of hotel windows anytime soon. Uh, but he is doing uh, well. 
Eleanor Donahue was a featured guest at a Hollywood show, a celebrity greeting and memorabilia event in Los Angeles early in July. Other stars with the Andy Griffith Show connections at that show were Charles Durkop, well, I'm sure, Dyerkop, I'm going to say it that way, uh, Larry, he was one of the crooks in the Otis the Deputy, and Kelly Flanagan, new Mayberry arrival Claudia Campbell in Opie and Mike, Opie and Mike episode, that was on episode number uh, 247, so I bet she looks a lot different because she was a little bitty young girl then, a little blonde haired girl, you remember her? So that's what it is. So Kelly is now managing editor for Sierra News Online. And there's a story, there's a link to a story about her that you can go and read. Margaret Carey, she was on those two Andy Griffith Show episodes we talked about earlier, and Alan Oppenheimer. He was Mr. Ruskin and Barney uh, host the Summit Meeting, episode number 240. They were both guests of the Fanboy Expo in Knoxville, Tennessee in late June. The Mayberry chapter traveled over there and got to meet them and got autographs. Yeah, both stars were at the comic convention primarily for roles beyond Mayberry. Margaret for being the live model for Disney's Tinkerbell and Alan for his countless voices in iconic animation productions, ranging from Skeletor and He-Man and Masters of the Universe to Vanity Smurf on the Smurfs as you might know. Uh, Julie Adams as Nurse Mary in The County Nurse, episode number 56. She also recently made a comic book convention appearance. Hers was closer to home in the Fernando Valley comic book convention back in June. In a recent Talk with Jackie column in the Toucan Times, Jackie Joseph writes about the adventures that she and husband David Lawrence had had involving an interesting cruise to Bora Bora last year. That's right, Bora Bora. Leroy McNeese and his Glory Land Bluegrass Gospel Band <clears> have <throat> been playing gigs close to home in California. And I'm losing my voice. <laughs> oh my goodness, let me take a drink. Oh, all right. Oh, that's better. Uh, George Lindsay's alma mater, that's UNA, the University of North Alabama, they are, well, they're trying to raise enough money to finish out the George Lindsay Film and Media Endowment Scholarship. So if you would like to contribute to that, there is a link in the e-bullet that will help you do that. So if you'd like to contribute to the George Lindsay Film and Media Endowment Scholarship, please do. The link is there. It's UNA. I won't even try to give it to you. It's also on the front of imayberry.com. You'll be able to see the link right there in front. Uh, it's for the University of North Alabama, so please visit that if you would like to help support and keep the memory of George Lindsay alive forever there at the University of North Alabama. George Lindsay Jr., speaking of George, he's recovered well from a health hiccup he had late last year. He reports that he's booking a lot of dates with his Wild West comedy shows and at fairs and stuff. He and Eric Norquist, that's the son of Margaret Carey, are working on some new material for their, I love the name of this and I've said it before, Eric and George, a one-man show comedy presentation that they're doing together. They're working on that. Awesome. And finally, from news and cast and crew, Dorothy Best, the wife of the late James Best, you know, Roscoe P. Coltrane, or Jim Lindsay, as we know him in Mayberry. She starred in a recent production of Neil Simon's Chapter 2 at Hickory, North Carolina Community Theater. That'd be fun to see. All right. All right, so we've got some sad news to report. Right, so let me take the music down a little bit. George Spence. George Spence passed away recently. It's with great sadness that we share the news of the passing of George Spence. A wonderful friend, countless in the Mayberry community. George died on July the 13th at his home in Kill Devil Hills, North Carolina, with his wife Stephanie by his side. He was 89 years old. George was loved by legions of Mayberry fans, especially those who attend Mount Airy's annual Mayberry Days Festival. 
which he began attending in 1996 and continued to do so as long as his health allowed, which for most of the years through 2013. George's one episode, it was one episode of the Andy Griffith Show was The House Guest. That was episode number 151 in 1965 is when it was aired. He played Frank, the temporarily estranged fiance of Andy's cousin, Gloria. In one brief scene, and then in the epilogue, which is rarely seen on reruns, but George made the absolute most of his pivotal scene, which included one line, Hi, Gloria, a kiss, which I think he enjoyed, and an embrace. That was all it took for George to be included among Mayberry royalty. George loved to tell the story about how director uh, Ruskin didn't want to rehearse uh, the kissing scene. As George told him, I thought we were going to have to kiss five or six times in rehearsal. Then I'll probably mess up and we'll have to kiss her more like ten times. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> George got it right in just one take, though. That's a cut, he yelled. <laughs> it's a wrap. Oh, me. Poor George. He goes getting to kiss this very attractive young lady. And uh, only got to do it once. <laughs> Andy was off to the side. <clears throat> busting a gut laughing. He came over to George and said, well, that's the toughest thing you can do in a film, and you did it in one take. One take. <laughs> oh, George. Not missing a beat, George replied, Andy, I've been kissing girls all my life. <laughs> Friend, there's a great write-up that Jim Clark did of George. I was just saying on a personal level, George Spence was a very, very kind man. He was at Mayberry Day's amazing voice projection that he had. And he had met Andy uh, at the outdoor theater that they both were in, Lost Colony. That's how they got to know one another. And, friends, it was a pleasure to be able to know him and his wife. Uh, there, there is a, a great bit of information in the e -bullet. I want to encourage you to head over there and read about George. George was incredibly humble. He knew better than no, almost anyone else. Uh, just the amazing gift and what it was to be on the Andy Griffith Show, even for just a few moments. He embraced every minute of being at Mayberry Days and shared his gratitude with fans. Mayberry Days is a celebration of many wonderful people, values, feelings, and relationships, and George represented them all, and he always will. So he is going to be missed. All right, so let's move on to a little bit more information. Guess what? We had no new chapters. We have 1,450 chapters of the Andy Griffith Show Rio and Watchers Club, which was started 38 years ago. And as of this bullet, between the e-bullet last time and this one in July, there were no new chapters. That's happened from time to time, but it's not very often. There's a lot of chapters out there, and folks continue to come up with great names. And hopefully we'll continue to see it, the club grow, or at least those who already are in the club gather more. Folks, if you look at the e-bullet, there's also information in there about stuff at Weavers. I encourage you to go check that out. We can use all the support we can get at Weavers. And in case you didn't know it, there's a new limited edition 1967 Andy Griffith Show squad car. It's a little matchbook car. Pretty cool little car you might want to go check out. Return to Mayberry and other things there. Uh, let's move along, though, to chapter news. Chapter news. Mayberry chapter in Knoxville has been very busy, as usual, with... Monthly events included parades uh, with their Mayberry squad car replica, uh, regular chapter outings, and all that kind of stuff. Their most recent parades were the 32nd annual Dolly Homecoming Parade in Pigeon Forge with Dolly Parton herself, I might add, in May, and then in the 4th of July parade in Farragut, Tennessee. Chapter members also enjoyed visiting Tags cast members Margaret Carey and Alan Oppenheimer, as I mentioned earlier, at Nashville's Fanboy Expo in June. The chapter has just published its summer 2017 edition of the Mayberry Minutes newsletter. 
there have been a lot of going ons to participate in. Uh, they've had trouble just, uh, they've had trouble fading, finding the time to stop and report and publish. They've been doing so much. <coughs> My goodness. Sorry for the coughing, folks. Shakedown, shakedown chapter of Laurenburg, Ten uh, Laurenburg North Carolina held its semi-annual gathering in June. And there's a photo of the group in the e-bullet. You'll see them in Howard Sprague and Ernst T. Bass join them. So that's Dewey Lamb's chapter. Looks like they had a great time. I know there was some swimming involved, and I heard Ernest T. jumped in the swim pool with all his clothes on. That's what I heard. You know, his he thought it was Saturday night. He needed a bath. That's what I was heard. He's asking for soap for the big uh, bathtub. <laughs> oh, let's see. Another big summer gathering was held July the 2nd, and that's when Blood Brothers, Blood Brothers chapter in Missouri got together for a, a high noon for a chicken and fresh fish fry. Ah, can't talk. The group conducted a little chapter business and discussed Barney's first car. Then they went on to enjoy a presentation about classic cars, uh, and they they had a 1933 Ford Coupe and a 1951 Ford Custom, both at the meeting. Oh, that's nice. Members of the Barney chapter in Greensboro, North Carolina, attended fellow chapter members Neil Brower's lecture at the Andy Griffith Museum on July the 8th. The group also continues to meet monthly for fun and games and good food. So definitely check that out. Uh, let's see. And, of course, there was the 5th Annual Mayberry Meetup that included a bunch of chapters to include mine, the uh, Mother Figure, yeah, Mother Figure chapter uh, here in Huntsville, as well as Who's Been Messing Up the Bulletin Board. We had both of those, and a bunch of those folks we just mentioned were there as well. The, the uh, Shakedown, Shakedown, and the Mayberry chapter were both there, along with others. I should have gotten their names. Folks, there is so much information there. Uh, I definitely encourage you to check out the e-bullet. I also want to encourage you to go over to imaberrycommunity.com and sign up. Be a part of the imaberry community. There's a lot of fun going on there. It's kind of a Facebook community that's only Mayberry folks. So go check it out. Uh, of course, check out Two Chairs No Waiting, which you are. You wouldn't be hearing this. But also Burke on Mayberry is a fun podcast. It's also located there on the same site with Two Chairs No Waiting. You'll see it. And the Mayberry Bible Study Podcast. And the and they also check out the Facebook pages for the Andy Griffith Show Rio and Watchers Club at facebook.com slash T A G S R W C and because we hear from them every week, we already know this one, the Gomer and Goober Pile Comic Book Literary Guild over on Facebook. Folks, there's lots more information in there. I'm not gonna go over any more of it because I know you've heard it. And uh I hope you enjoyed just that little bit of a rundown. Go and check out the e-bullet. You definitely want to. It's a, it's an amazing thing. I want to thank Jim Clark for all the amazing work he does to keep the spirit of Mayberry alive and well for all. All right. So let's go and check this out. <laughs> Welcome to This Week in Mayberry History, a report by special correspondent Randy Turner of the Gomer and Cooper Pyle Comic Book Literary Guild of the Mayberry Historical Society. Jerry Van Dyke was born on July the 27th, 1931. Jerry appeared only once in The Andy Griffith Show, playing Jerry Miller on the last black and white episode of the series. Jerry Miller was the Sultan in the Sultan's favorite carnival show, which really meant he was a one-man band, playing banjo, kazoo, and drums simultaneously. After he had been let go by the manager, Andy invited him to dinner, and Jerry eventually filled in for Barney, against Andy's better judgment. Jerry is the younger brother of Dick Van Dyke, and has had a wonderful career of his own. Shortly after Jerry served a stint in the military, Dick starred in his first hit TV show, The Dick Van Dyke Show. Just like The Andy Griffith Show, Dick's show was produced by Danny Thomas and Sheldon Leonard, the latter of whom sometimes directed. 
and had music provided by Earl Hagen. Jerry eventually made his national TV debut on an episode, playing Rob Petrie's banjo-playing brother, Stacy. This led to Jerry appearing on The Ed Sullivan Show and being made a regular on The Judy Garland Show. He also played supporting roles in several films, including 1963's The Courtship of Eddie's Father, starring Ronnie Howard as Eddie. Jerry was sought after for more than one series. He was offered the title role in Gilligan's Island, but turned it down, partially because he was not overly interested in being part of an ensemble cast, hoping to instead replicate his older brother's success in fronting his own show. It is likely the latter reasoning only that caused him to turn down a second offer to be a regular character, though not the lead. And that offer came from the producers and star of The Andy Griffith Show. When Jerry appeared in Mayberry in the last black and white episode, the producers had already known for quite some time that Don Knotts would not be returning. So in addition to being a guest star on the show, his appearance was also, in a way, an audition to see if the character of Jerry Miller might serve as a replacement for the departing Barney Fife. The producers liked the results and offered Jerry the permanent role. However, just as he had done previously with Gilligan's Island, Jerry turned it down. He has since said it is a decision he regrets. This is likely especially true as the series he did choose to star in was My Mother the Car, widely viewed as one of the worst television shows ever produced. In this 1965 series, Jerry played attorney David Crabtree, who bought a 1928 antique car upon learning it was the reincarnation of his deceased mother, Gladys. Perhaps on paper, the concept might have seemed workable, since there were a number of fantasy-based sitcoms accepted by the public, including Mr. Ed, which featured a talking horse. But the show was a failure and only lasted a single season. Despite the reception of My Mother the Car, Jerry continued to work steadily, including co-starring with Andy Griffith in the 1969 film Angel in My Pocket. And he eventually hit pay dirt with his role as Luther Van Dam on Coach from 1989 to 1997, the role for which he is best known. That's it for this week. As always, thanks for listening. And remember to take Andy's advice and go out there and act like somebody. Thank you, Randy. Thank you. That's always a great report. This week in Mayberry History, don't miss a single day of it. They have a daily version over at the Gomer and Goober Pyle Comic Book Literary Guild. If you don't want to miss it, you can get an email from Randy. If you send him an email at turnersgrade at gmail.com, he'll make sure you don't miss a single issue. Folks, I hope you guys have enjoyed this. This has been a lot of fun for me. Uh, I got I got a couple of things I want to mention and go into because we got some feedback from last week. So let's go and check this out. This is from uh, Lydia in our chat room. She posted over on Facebook. She said, she said this was, and she's got pictures and a link to last week's podcast saying, uh, this weekend was our fifth annual meetup in Mount Airy. What started five years ago is a simple gathering about of about 10 or 15 anonymous podcast viewers to get to know each other and meet each other for the first time has evolved into a gathering of about 50, complete with t-shirts and a cake. I never believed some of these unknown folks would become such good friends. It really restores your faith in humanity to get to be with total strangers who don't have ulterior motives, but are true, trustworthy, genuine, and kind. Some of them I include as true friends of mine. What a testimony uh, to this podcast, I'll say, for the uh, for having these meetups and getting together. I know it's been uh, truly enriched my life. As we say, there's no friend like a Mayberry friend. And one of the replies that she got was from uh, Tim Bradshaw. He wrote in and said, I 100% agree. 
just so nice and fulfilling to enjoy company with so many like-minded people. No politics, no news, just enjoying each other's company and sharing the thing that we like most, all things Mayberry. All this goes beyond the show. Wonderful resources we have, a choice of major events, a podcast, I Mayberry Community, uh, at the, and at a meetup. Just like Clint Howard told us when he came to Mount Airy, this ain't the Beverly Hillbillies. This is something really special. I see it in your eyes. So I thought that was pretty cool. So I wanted to grab those and share them with you. There's all kinds of stuff happening over at the Two Chairs No Waiting website uh, and, and the Facebook page. So you can go to both. You can be a member over at the Facebook page and make comments like that and talk to each other. We love hearing from you that way. I'd also love to hear from you if you just give me a call at 888-684-8415. I'd love to hear from you. You can also email me at floyd at imayberry.com. Leave messages on Facebook. You can just head over to twochairsnowaiting.com and click the contact button. If you do, it'll give you all kinds of different ways that you can get in touch with me. So there's all kinds of stuff there. Go there and check it out. Folks, I want to thank you. I want to thank our patrons who support the show and uh, donate toward the cause and keeping everything up and running. You too can be a patron. I'd love to have your support. If you like what we do here on Two Chairs No Waiting, what I do, support me. Give me a little bit of support, and I appreciate it. If you can't do it monetarily, tell folks about us. Until next time, good night, everybody.